Hello, I'm Elena Noor. Please tell me the date of your birth. I was born on October 28, 1993 at 11.30 a.m. In which city were you born? Tehran. Elena, dear, your tarot is full of amazing events and I find it very interesting too, the beautiful event that will unfold in the next six months and that financial miracle, which truly is a miracle beyond explanation, will happen. Right now, the tarot is giving you messages regarding your emotional issues. Based on your sixth and seventh cards, I unfortunately see you involved in two wrong relationships. One of them is a relationship where the love is one-sided. Why are you investing your energy and emotions into someone whom I don't even see in your fortune? On the other hand, there is someone who's only in your life for financial support. I want you to know that emotional issues should not be your priority right now. Don't even think about them. A talented girl like you, who has extraordinary abilities, should not be building the bridges of her life around someone who is completely wrong for her. That money which is coming into your life, well, the energy of your third chakra is becoming very negative and is destroying that energy. I've told you that you have many opportunities. You've lost those opportunities by making mistakes and wrong choices. But I'm not upset at all. I'm actually very happy for you that you've decided to come and get your spiritual plan examined and have your life direction shown to you. You know, you were like a train that had derailed and just needed guidance to get back on the right track. With that miraculous event that happens in your life and the complete financial independence, you will gain, I see you growing that money and reaching incredible success. The energy of your third chakra will become so extraordinary that something very interesting will happen afterward. There will be an energy shift between your third and fourth chakras. As the energy of your third chakra rises and becomes incredible, miracles will also occur in your fourth chakra. I can see something happening within the next year, a person entering your life. The lover's card tells me that this person is someone with whom you will truly understand the meaning of love. The energy of your fourth chakra, which had become frustrated and had lost its energy, will not only be restored, but will also become very radiant. And once again, tarot, has another amazing message for you. Within the next year, you will decide to immigrate and that love, that miracle of your life, will be the one who leads you to your dream of immigration. If you listen to all these mystical whispers of the demons that I've just told you about, your life will turn into something wonderful. The things you just said made me tear up a bit. I honestly don't know what to say. I just wish I could do something to help, something to overcome. Your first card, the one that starts your tarot and gives me a general outlook of your upcoming year is the Sun card. This card holds a lot of secrets and overall promises a bright future. And I am here to tell you what that future is. I know, dear, I can see that right now you are in a state of seven of cups, feeling disoriented. You want to do various things for your life, but you're unsure. That card is telling me that you are constantly considering and weighing different goals and plans, but in the end you feel stressed, regretful, and your efforts don't lead to results. But dear, don't worry at all. Why? Because I see a legal or court issue within the next six months. The justice card is telling me that a legal case you've been fighting for, for about five years ago, hasn't gotten anywhere. It's like you lost some money and basically gave it up because it seemed impossible to get it back. Uh, yes, I lost this money about a year or a year and a half ago due to fraud and the situation was so bad I, you didn't even have anything to file a complaint over. I just sent out a few subpoenas which led to nowhere. But dear, a miracle will happen for you. The sun will shine on your life, will bring a lot of money and it will be because of that court case you will turn that confusion into an opportunity I want you to right now, as you hear these mystical whispers and listen to my voice, get up, grab a paper and pen, 
and write down all the talents and abilities that I see within you. And deep down, you already know you have them. List them on a paper. By doing this, you are creating magic with time for yourself. Because you see, I can see that money and it will come to you. Once it does, you will have a proper plan and you will know what to do with it. I see you taking various courses, learning about what you love. Because that's what the Eight of Pentacles card is telling me you will work in the field you are passionate about and when that money comes to you dear you will have already put in the effort yourself that money is the result of a miracle a supernatural miracle and you will multiply that money by 10 I see that blessing pouring into your life and the third chakra that had lost its energy will be revitalized dear this is one of those opportunities as I said a supernatural miracle and you need to take advantage of it this year Year is your year don't let it pass you by you are a very talented girl who just lost sight of the path I am helping you dear I'm not just reading your tarot cards I am planning out your life for you and telling you what to do to get on the right path and out of the confusion I see that you're going to do it because of the grace that the supernatural is giving you and the talent you possess you will multiply that money several times over dear and you will achieve incredible financial independence standing strong like a lioness you just described my entire life dear anahita i'm exactly in such a situation right now even at this very moment lately i keep thinking that i can't pursue or find my talent or follow what i love or make money from it i want to do something or make a move in this area i'm very upset with myself about this constantly struggling with myself my god all i want is to figure out what my talent is what can i excel in what work should i pursue so i don't keep hopping from one thing to another how is my daily life going right now i play the handpan drum and in my daily routine i mostly practice at home and do some exercise i really really want to go to a gym and do yoga i'm really passionate about it i've been looking into where and how i can go but for now i'm just practicing at home because i love exercising so much recently i've been thinking a lot about real estate maybe working in that field like buying and selling houses I keep thinking that maybe it's a good idea for me to work in such an environment because I'm a social person and can handle those types of tasks. Hello my dear friends, I hope you're all having a good night. From the moment you hear your spiritual plan, magic is happening for you under the permission of the Master aligning you with your destiny. Dive deep into my words. I am your spiritual friend and I see your subconscious things you've forgotten are coming back to you and the codes are unlocking in your life path. You are just two steps away from aligning with your destiny. Let me explain a bit about the spirit and body of a person so that you can better understand it and use this to your advantage. Before we are born, our spirit belongs to higher dimensions and lives with 100% of its power, experiencing emotions much more intensely, joy, sorrow, everything. But when the spirit chooses to be born and enter the physical world, which is very exciting and enjoyable for it, it forgets everything. The subconscious which I am talking about now forgets the purpose it came to the world for. It's like a human who feels lost and can't find their way. This physical life is like a matrix or a dream. If a person can recall their subconscious, they can move faster than time in the physical world and experience ultimate happiness. The master has many episodes and explanations on this topic. I'm simplifying these words so you can understand this three-dimensional world. What is it? What is the purpose of the spirit? So step by step, we will implement your spiritual plan. Ask any questions you have so you can benefit from it. It will help you for the rest of your life. You will understand all the spiritual issues and if 
a person uses their spiritual map correctly, they will live far beyond just a physical human existence because you'll learn how to strengthen your lower four chakras and because there isn't a single human in the world with fully empowered lower chakras. This is destiny. Let me go back a bit. Your spirit or soul lives in another dimension and it's just a stage. When it succeeds in being born as a child and having a physical body to experience the five senses, eating, drinking, sex, lust, power, wealth, it gets to feel these things, speaking, walking, having a physical body, living and enjoying the benefits of the physical world. I want to tell you the age of your soul. Your soul is very deep, but it's still raw, impatient and eager to experience the physical world as quickly as possible. That's why it ends up living a normal life. A deep soul with a high frequency and energy comes to experience the physical body and takes more from it. Your soul is powerful. You didn't come into the world for an ordinary purpose. You want to achieve power, fame, wealth and love through your lower four chakras to break through the material world and wake up, leaving a mark behind. What does that mean? It means the wealth you leave behind, the blessing you leave behind, the energy you leave behind. You are very close to your spirit's goal. And when I talk about the color of your aura and your destiny line, know that this is how you can continue on your soul's journey and take on a leading role in the world, reaching even higher goals. So obtaining wealth, power, and all these attractive things, these energies, everything humans seek to satisfy themselves can help your soul reach its next stage of evolution, how your spiritual plan is laid out, how I'm seeing the depths of your soul and the purpose of your soul and helping you step by step get closer to it. I want to tell you about your soul's strengths and weaknesses so that you can use them in your physical life, not just listen to your spiritual plan for entertainment. The color of your aura is a soft, bright pink. Before you were born, you lived in another world with your soulmate and you made a powerful soul pack to find each other in the physical world and you knit your fourth chakras. Your soul deeply desires to marry its other half. Your soulmate will give you great power and your life, your happiness will blossom after your marriage. I'm so happy that you haven't married yet, which is why I'm telling you, you are just two steps away from your destiny line. You just need to get on the path to finding your soulmate. Wow, dear. I couldn't believe it. Everything you said in that video, I felt it all. I saw each thing you mentioned so clearly. One more thing I wanted to tell you that you also mentioned. There are some pages about palm reading. There was one that showed migration clearly in the lines. Like if you had these kinds of lines, it would mean migration, not something close, but far like Europe, Canada, or the US. And there was another one that showed the lines of your soulmate. There was a crescent moon line on my hand, and it said that your life starts after marriage with your soulmate, which is exactly what you said. Let me tell you what to do. You've reached such an attractive and beautiful version of yourself. There's a lot of powerful energy gathered in your second chakra when you want to advance in your career and finances the energy of your second chakra is so visible in society that you can't transfer it to your third chakra and turn it into money but this energy is a magic in itself that just needs to be transferred to the third chakra some of this energy also needs to move to the fifth chakra if you want to advance in your career and finances, your work should be aligned with your fifth chakra. This way you can create wealth in your third chakra. The energy collected in your second chakra, that tattoo you have, is an unknowing magic. One day in your life you got that tattoo for the moment you are in now. A lot of things in our lives happen subconsciously because we are moving along a path that we ourselves have chosen second by second. Do you know what code I'm giving you? That tattoo brings you closer to your third chakra's goal. 
the powerful energy of money in your life can reach your fourth chakra and when the magic happens with that tattoo energy flows from the fifth chakra to the fourth and you'll find your soulmate put your main focus on your finances the more money flows into your life the stronger your third chakra will become putting you on the path to your destiny your soulmate is the one who carries the energy of the second chakra this person is a businessman another thing i felt strongly and so clearly was that for many years i've been thinking about this and i know that the only thing that needs to be clarified is my financial path i've always thought about this and now i can really feel it i feel that once my financial path becomes clear everything else will suddenly open up for me suddenly everything will fall into place i've been stuck in this situation for years this job this work this money this income I feel this blockage but I know that once it's unlocked everything else will fall into place one by one like a chain reaction as soon as the lock is opened everything will line up So Elena look how far into your life I can see you know what the core issue is your soulmate is on a very high frequency and you need to be in a high financial frequency in your third chakra to align with that the universe and the supernatural will align you with this path but if you move too slowly and leave everything to time you will take longer to reach that path the person might even marry someone else and start a life and you might do the same that's why i'm glad you haven't married yet and are at this stage where i'm helping you remember your subconscious i'm talking about two souls analyzing your spiritual plan and i've reached this point through examining your spirit so you see how close you are to your destiny all your energy should go into your third chakra and the master will certainly help you he's definitely going to guide you because your main goal after finding love in your fifth chakra is to create wealth and leave a legacy the energy you leave behind will be powerful once you gradually awaken you will remember all of this yourself if i were to talk to you about each of your chakras and what i see in your destiny for the rest of your life there are so many businesses that you'll create with the help of your soulmate your happiness will start with marriage If you align your life with the supernatural from this moment, you will find your soulmate within a year, and the universe will place you on that path. Your lower four chakras must become strong. It's great that you've already gathered knowledge about stored energy in your second chakra, but let me tell you about your financial issues. You lack security in your first chakra, which is why you haven't been able. to find stability in your work, job or business. The first chakra provides security and brings money, sustenance and all life issues into higher chakras. Your life's opportunities and luck will multiply. I can feel in my bones every word you said. Now, how can I transfer this extra energy from second chakra to my first chakra? How do I start strengthening my first chakra? How do I clear and align my chakras? I'm very pleased with your spiritual plan and your spirit's goals and I know you can reach them Elena. All I can say as a spiritual friend is how happy I am to see someone so aligned with their destiny and moving correctly on their path. You just shouldn't backtrack or take the wrong steps. From now on every moment of your life is crucial every second and I want the master to plan each one for you. Hello dear Elena. I'm Mohammed, assistant to Master Thayam. We'll start interpreting your birth chart now. We've studied it and you were born in the 9th house Sagittarius, which is associated with the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is known as the planet of growth and spiritual leadership. People born under this sign have a philosophical nature, always seeking higher ranks or maintaining them. 
you will always seek things greater than yourself, such as power and energy. Overall, this is the most spiritual sign. Spirituality and humanitarianism are strong in this date. In your second house, you have the sign of Capricorn, which is highly disciplined and very rule-oriented. I also see Saturn in this house, which strengthens structure and discipline, but it might also lead to some strictness. You will have great stability in your family. When challenges arise, you will be able to grasp this stability and use all the tools needed for crisis management effectively. This same stability is reflected in your financial matters and bank accounts, where you will be cautious with spending. Your financial matters will always be organized and you will act maturely in financial issues. To grasp this stability, you won't take risks or make impulsive decisions in financial matters. This is the planet of hard work and its placement in this house shows that you can succeed financially through hard work. Progress might not happen quickly for you, but overall, it will create a gradual upward trend. In the third house, you have Aquarius and almost the same. Saturnian discipline applies here. You won't waste time on communications and will seek out connections that bring you benefits and awareness. When starting new activities, you will be very cautious, but when it comes to showing courage and boldness, you'll transform and become a completely different person. You have your own techniques and in crises, you behave in ways that may not be seen in your normal daily life. In fact, others won't expect such a reaction from you. In the fourth house, you have Pisces, and the planet Moon is also in this house. Jupiterians want to bring a spiritual dimension to their home and living space. You might use spiritual statues or paintings in your decor. You like it when everyone who comes to your home learns something. There might be motivational or ethical quotes on the walls, or you may have a spiritual library the moon is well positioned in this house, which is considered one of the best placements, and the moon symbolizes the mother. This house is the house of the mother, which means you'll be able to take on maternal responsibilities in the best way possible, not only for your child and family, but also for those around you. You'll have a very kind and flexible temperament, although you may become more sensitive. This also enhances your sense of morality. You'll be very active with children, and will seek practical education with them, perhaps involving them in sports or exciting activities. In the sixth house, you have Taurus, which means you won't have many enemies. Generally, Jupiterians have the ability to turn their enemies into friends, which is a unique trait. If you do have enemies, they will mostly appear in the workplace because Jupiterians are charismatic and likable, and people tend to gather around them. This can trigger jealousy from toxic individuals. The planet Ketu is also in this house. The 4th, 6th, 8th and 12th houses in your chart have otherworldly influences and you have planets that align well in these areas, giving you talent and strong tendencies toward the mystical. The moon, especially in the 12th house, can have intuitive connections, and in the fourth house, this ability can blossom, creating a psychological inclination towards the supernatural. These people often have accurate instincts. Ketu in the sixth house formally creates magical abilities. Ketu and Rahu are highly magical planets, and Rahu in the twelfth house seals the deal. In the seventh house, you have Gemini, and you probably have a strong liking for sweets. Mercury's influence in your chart can create some challenges in marriage. Jupiterians in the ninth house tend to have belief-based conflicts with Geminis who are more materialistic, which contrasts with the spiritual nature of Jupiterians. In the eighth house, you have Cancer, which causes fluctuations in your emotions. You may feel anxious in emotional matters, and you need a spiritual partner to help you maintain balance. In the ninth house, you have Leo, which means your beliefs and convictions are very important to you. You will always believe in a higher power, even if you're not religious, and you will remain loyal to this belief. In the 10th house, you have Virgo, which gives you great abilities in accounting, business, and transactions. You will have a strong aptitude for financial analysis, and it will also help you establish great business relationships. Virgo, in the professional realm, creates talent in legal fields as well. And with the presence of Venus in this house, 
it enhances this even more. Venus is associated with art, so you may use art to present yourself in your career or social life. Libra in the 11th house means you won't seek personal gain in your relationships with friends and those around you. Even if you're owed money, you won't rush to collect it. In some cases, it's been seen that individuals can even gain financial benefits from their enemies. The planets Mercury, Jupiter, the Sun, and Mars are also in this house. And this combination shows that issues related to income generation and financial matters hold a very special significance for you. There is a strong connection between the houses of career and income in your chart, which indicates that you can achieve great success in the realm of income and social standing. Scorpio is present in the last house with Rahu and as we mentioned, Rahu is a mystical and magical planet. Rahu creates excitement and interest in its domain, showing us where our future life path lies and where we need to focus in this life to succeed. Rahu in the chart reveals part of our life goals and the twelfth house is the house of the mystical, of separating from the material world and of liberation. Scorpio is a very deep sign and Rahu in this sign takes the individual deep into the mystical world, creating a talent and passion to delve into this knowledge. This knowledge is deeply ingrained in the nature of Jupiterians with this configuration. Your life is intertwined with the mystical. You might become a spiritual teacher, a good researcher in this field, or perhaps even a healer. You will have excellent abilities in interacting with the otherworldly, and you will always gain valuable knowledge about it, which you can use to help others. This configuration creates deep dreams and visions for you, and it indicates that you will travel abroad, possibly for your goals, and may even migrate. Your chart shows a placement in the nakshatra of Purva Ashada. This nakshatra is analyzed through the lens of planet Moon. Purva Ashada is the 20th nakshatra and it create bile duct for you. It is governed by Venus and is known for being invincible. It indicates that a person can independently achieve wealth and act according to their own desires without being influenced by others. Generally, individuals under this nakshatra are well known in society. You will be loyal to your spouse, although you may not have much interest in higher education. But in the field you're passionate about, you will gather a lot of knowledge and information. You may develop unusual behavior or styles that others might not easily understand. People with this nakshatra usually achieve high positions in society but perform best in service-oriented roles. Venus's influence in this nakshatra gives you popularity among people. Purva Ashada means early success or invincibility. It expands creativity and grants healing abilities. This nakshatra is very abundant and it usually brings fame and wisdom. People under this nakshatra tend to have a philosophical and spiritual nature, with the main motivation being spiritual liberation or moksha. Additionally, Venus gives intuitive powers and higher forces to the individual. One of the extraordinary outcomes of Purva Ashada is discovering unknown possibilities and potentials. Many unknown and unexpected possibilities can be revealed by you. This nakshatra is considered a divine blessing showing spiritual wisdom, hidden knowledge, and intuitive power. You are a good debater and have innate pride. You will be respected and loyal to your spouse, humble, and have many friends. You will be interested in law and politics. Each nakshatra has four parts called padas, and you are in the second pada which indicates hard work and material success in life. The focus here is on continuous growth and reaching the top in your professional life. Competitors will be defeated by your intellect, reasoning, and the quality of your services. You may not easily accept religious matters and prefer to help people in the most realistic and logical way possible. As I mentioned, there is wealth in this chart and when we look at the main chart, the connection between the 9th and 11th houses indicates that you can achieve great material success in life. Your chart also has the nakshatra of Rivati, which is the last nakshatra and is associated with wealth. The moon in this position makes a person clean, brave and likable and they have a well-shaped body. In general, these people are lucky. This nakshatra brings abundance and prosperity, creates a gentle and selfless nature, and fosters a love for animals and the helpless. People of this nakshatra are naturally very creative, honest in their work, deep in their learning, not envious of others' wealth, sociable and appreciative of ancient culture. They are interested in wisdom and knowledge, inclined towards religion and spirituality, and have a fondness for animals. They often take on the problems of others, which can sometimes become overwhelming. They may be skeptical, and this skepticism can cause them distress. 
often they experience feelings of unkindness or insecurity which makes them develop excellent self-mastery. You need to work on maintaining focus and controlling your habits of going out and helping others as this can sometimes become excessive. This tendency may even be misunderstood by those who don't get it. People of this nakshatra generally have attractive, beautiful appearances. They are charming, intelligent and happy with a great deal of knowledge and information. However, they are also frequently anxious. They tend to be surrounded by abundance and prosperity in their lives. This nakshatra is also very inclined towards spirituality. They support others and often receive support in return. They have talents in the arts and progress quickly in life and may be widely liked. Rahu is placed in the nakshatra of Anuradha in your chart, which indicates karmic responsibilities. Anuradha helps Rahu become aware of our divine connection and Saturn here teaches Rahu how to control its forces and use them positively. A strong and interesting pattern emerges in your chart seen in the Vaga Vimshotari Dasha. This configuration points to your spiritual and religious progress. In this placement, the moon is in the fourth house of the Lagna, where it is in its own house, in its highest strength. Interestingly, the moon is also the ruler of the house of occult sciences in your main chart, indicating your strength and ability in spiritual matters and ensuring progress in this area. It can be said that this is the most powerful configuration for the Vimshotari Dasha. Furthermore, in Vimshotari Dasha, Rahu, Ketu, and Jupiter are located in the last house, leaving no doubt that you came into this world to work in the field of spirituality and mysticism. This becomes even more fascinating when we look at the planetary periods in your life. Currently, you are in the main period of Venus and the sub-period of Rahu. Planetary periods show the overall direction and main focus of one's life, with Venus being known as the planet of magic and spells. During sub-periods, we experience events and conditions that are more tangible and noticeable right now. You're in the Rahu sub-period within the Venus period, and in this period, you will certainly have significant experiences related to spirituality and spiritual realms. Rahu in its period will surely place important teachers and connections related to this subject on your path, drawing you into this great knowledge. However, this period may bring financial challenges and difficulties, causing confusion in monetary matters. The Rahu period is considered a challenge for you financially, where sudden changes will occur potentially in any area, but the main focus will be on mystical and spiritual matters as well as wealth. In fact, Rahu seeks to open the door to liberation for you in this period by creating difficulties in material and worldly matters, which may lead to some disillusion on the other hand, Rahu will also pull you into the spiritual and mystical realms with its enthusiasm and attractions. Your ruling planet is Saturn and the pattern formed around it is called the Atmakaraka, which reflects the soul's desire in a person's life beyond earthly and material wants. Naturally, it also has a great influence on an individual's character. People with Saturn as their Atmakaraka are typically humble, serving others without expecting anything in return. In your chart, this service-oriented tendency manifests within the family domain. And as a child, you may have matured very quickly, with others often perceiving you as older than you actually are. In fact, Saturn's Atmakaraka gives a person a unique personality, although it can have lower confidence levels. Such individuals always seek encouragement, validation, and support from others. You have a great ability to understand and empathize with others, often seeing their problems as your own, and feeling it is your responsibility Responsibility to solve them. Justice is important to you, and you believe that hard work leads to achievement. It is common for people with this configuration to be involved in legal activities. They have a spiritual and philosophical side, as Saturn is a spiritual teacher. Such individuals don't boast or loudly proclaim their achievements or the work they've done. They might participate in many charitable activities, or have expertise in certain skills that are done quietly in the background, without drawing attention. Well, dear Elena, the explanation and interpretation of your chart are complete and I hope wherever you are in life you are happy healthy and successful take care all right dear Elena this part of your spiritual plan is very important let me give you a physical example to help you understand it you know how in the physical world we have family and friends 
The same is true when our soul lives in other worlds or after we die. We have connections and attachments with higher dimensions. So just as we came to live in this physical world, it's not like a soul is born and comes alone to experience this physical world. There are connections and powers that if you connect to them, that's what they call magic. It raises your spiritual power, allowing you to live beyond the physical. This means your lower chakras become powerful and you begin to learn the secrets of the universe through the higher chakras using that wisdom and knowledge in the lower chakras. As a result, your wealth increases, love in your life grows, and you leave a greater legacy. Whether you have 20 years or 30 years left to live, the more your soul goes through this phase, the more it balances the light and darkness within itself in the fourth chakra. That white light behind your aura, the energy of union with Lady Lilith becomes available to you. This means you can fully attain love with the energy of the moon and the magic of ritual. If the master allows you to perform it, you can definitely have 100% success in finding your soulmate and getting married. Your soulmate will come into your life for marriage once you raise your frequency and align with your life path. These are the things you need to do. This is the mystical plan I'm explaining to you. Now, let's talk about your first chakra and how to strengthen it with the help of the angels and demons. This energy must develop in your first chakra. In your work, career, and emotional matters, the energy in your first chakra is not enough. When you want to achieve something, you need to give 100% effort. The name of your angel is Mersail, which helps you become very determined, resolute, and strong-willed so you can reach your goal with full power. In your second chakra, you have such powerful energies of influence and attraction. Now, do you understand why I'm telling you that excessive energy in the second chakra prevents you from focusing on your financial goals? When you go out into society for business, financial, and professional purposes, it stops you from pursuing wealth it's like people's attention is drawn to you that's true and i remember how much i used to pay attention to my appearance even from a young age i was always very focused on self-care and i still am i remember at the peak of this focus when i was 17 or 18 it continued intensely for another three or four years it was so strong that i could feel how much i was at my peak even now i still feel that way this energy now needs to form in your first chakra. Your spirit needs to grow strong at its foundation. Your spiritual foundation or horoscope is already powerful because you have a deep soul. In the fourth dimension, your twin demon acts as a treasure trove that creates emotional and financial opportunities in the physical world. If you want to achieve great wealth in 10 years, this can shorten the time to just one year. This is one of the forms of magic you need to perform twin demon magic and using the power of the angel every lunar helps to grow the energy in the first chakra this will help your soul develop faster and reach the strength of the fourth chakra with the energy of lady lilith this is you individual ritual done with the numerical value of your name Let's move to the demon. You must create balance with the dark energies inside you. During each Scorpio moon phase, you need to control these dark energies. The name of your demon is Kanzar. It creates jealousy in the fourth chakra, pulling you away from your heart chakra path. During Scorpio moons, intense inner anger surfaces. You feel like all the gaps and shortcomings from your childhood rise to the surface, making you feel overwhelmed. You can't handle important matters during Scorpio moons. You must control all of these energies for an entire year. You'll need to learn how to manage all your important conversations and meetings so that you can control these energies. You'll need to do this for a year and you'll learn how to do it. You are very strict and 100% self-willed. These are exactly the energies that if you balance them will make the angel powerful. When these energies are not controlled and are wasted, they pull you away from your life path. For example, if you want to do something related to your finances right now, a result that took you three years to achieve could suddenly be ruined because there are certain important tasks that you 
should not do on specific days. Let's move on to the next stage of your spiritual plan. I want to summarize for you the choice of the 14th fortune that you made, meaning that the moment you were born, your soul entered your physical body. Can you achieve your soul's goal? Yes, you can. You have chosen the 14th horoscope, which is about immortality, leaving a legacy behind. This is a difficult path. We're talking about reaching perfection. The soul needs to be refined and this refining process must happen, but you can do it. We need to cross the boundary of the fourth chakra. I've explained this much to you so far, but the spiritual issues are much deeper. I want us to go further into the details. So even if we talk for hours and days about your spiritual issues, it won't be enough. For now, I want you to grasp the overall picture so we can dive into the details later. Exactly everything you said. I've experienced it in my life. I don't have the security of my first chakra, and I never have. My second chakra is so strong, and I can feel its energy clearly. Everything you said was absolutely correct, each and every part of it. It was exactly how I felt, and honestly, I couldn't have explained it as well myself. Everything you said was exactly right.